Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll start the discussion on RNS configurations for chiral molecules. You can find this entire series along with my practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website LeiaForSci.com slash chirality. In the last video, we introduced the concept of chirality and said that we classify a pair of enantiomers as having the R or S configuration. And how do we do that? We need to find the absolute configuration around each chiral atom or each chiral carbon, where the absolute configuration looks at the chiral carbon, the atoms around it, and then the order of the atoms to give you R or S. And the way we rank these atoms is by following the kahn ingel prelog system after the inventors. How do we rank the atoms? By atomic number. Not by the size of the chain, not by the weight, by the atomic number of the individual atom that is attached to your chiral center. This is where a lot of students get confused. So once again, the atomic number of the atom directly attached to that central carbon, that chiral carbon. So you get a chiral molecule, you open your periodic table, you waste a good few seconds looking for the atoms. Don't do that. In my Intro to Orgo video series, I show you the 10 atoms that you have to memorize in your organic chemistry course so that you don't waste your time constantly looking at the periodic table. We have in period 1 hydrogen, period 2 carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, period 3 phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and then going down bromine and iodine. Why is this important? We have electronegativity going up towards the right, size going down to the left, which is great for reactions. But here's another reason to know them. This is the order that we're going to use to rank these atoms. The atomic numbers will increase from left to right on the period, and then increase as you go down the groups. This tells you that iodine is your absolute top priority if these are the atoms in your molecule. Again, these are the 10 most common atoms that are going to show up in your molecules. So you start with iodine, then bromine, then chlorine, sulfur, phosphorus, then fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen is always your lowest priority. The one other atom that'll sometimes come up to trick you is deuterium. Deuterium? Where is that on the periodic table? That's a little bit of a trick that professors like to use to see if you know how to differentiate and also to pinpoint the specific hydrogen in question. Remember from general chemistry that isotopes are atoms that have the same atomic number, meaning the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, which gives them a different mass. You don't have to know the specific names for different isotopes, but you should recognize hydrogen. When you think of hydrogen, you're thinking of the hydrogen isotope that has a mass of one and an atomic number of one, because it has one proton, no neutrons, and that gives you a mass of one. This is protium, or what we refer to as hydrogen. But there is another hydrogen atom that has an atomic number of one, but a mass of two, and that's because it has one proton and one neutron for a total mass of two. This is the heavy hydrogen called deuterium, where the prefix de stands for the number two. This is the only time where you're going to look at atomic mass instead of atomic number to rank substituents on a chiral center. So when present, hydrogen is always your lowest priority, then deuterium. Here are the four steps I like to go through to make sure that I'm ranking my chiral centers correctly. Step one, rank the atoms using the kahn ingel prelog system. I will try a few examples shortly. Step two, ensure that number four is in the back. When we're ranking atoms, we're looking at three-dimensional structures. We have a chiral center with four groups coming out of it, but it's very hard to rank in three dimensions. So if we have four substituents, we say number four is the lowest priority. Let's not think about it. Let's put number four in the back, ignore it, take the top three remaining contenders, and figure out if they will give me R or S. So what you have to do is ensure that number four is in the back. I'll show you what to do if it's not in the back, but you always have to think of it as back. 
Step three, we're going to cross out number four because again, we only care about the top three priorities. We put number four in the back so that we can get rid of it. And finally, step four, you want to trace an arc from one to two to three because that is all we care about. Chirality is a tricky topic and it's easy to get overwhelmed. So as you're studying this, study them in phases and make sure that you master the first phase before you move on to the next. Your four phases are as follows. When you have number four in the back, that's pretty simple. When you have number four forward, it's harder but still relatively simple. When you have long chains so that you have to rank deep into the molecule. And finally, when number four is not forward or back. And we'll go through this one at a time so make sure you master it. Try the questions in the practice quiz, then move on to the next stage. Try the questions, move on to the next stage, and that is how you're going to master chirality. We'll start with a simple example looking at two chiral carbons where the substituents are the same, but the order is slightly different. I'm including the little cheat guide so you can see the ranking of atoms, but I want you to memorize it so they have this ingrained in your head. Let's start with the structure on the left. Anytime you see hydrogen, that is always number four. Nothing can rank lower than hydrogen because it's the lowest atom. Even deuterium outranks hydrogen. So when you have a hydrogen present, you know it's number four. And when you don't have deuterium, which is often, the next absolute lowest atom is carbon. And what's the absolute lowest substituent you can put on a carbon? Hydrogen. So here's the trick. Hydrogen is always number four. If both hydrogen and methyl are present, methyl is always number three. If hydrogen is not present, but you have a methyl, it'll always be number four. Zero in on that, mark it, and then rank the other atoms you're not as familiar with. In this case, we have iodine and bromine. Iodine is a lower down. It has a higher atomic number, so it outranks bromine. That'll be number one, number two. Iodine is number one. Bromine is number two. Step one, rank your substituents. Good. Step two, ensure that number four is in the back. I set this up as a simple example with hydrogen as number four in the back. Step three, you want to cross out number four because we put it in the back so we don't have to think about it. And step four, we're going to trace an arc from one to two to three. An arc from one to two to three. Everyone has their way of doing this. I like for my arrowhead on the arc to end on top of the molecule. And that way I can see if the arc curves towards the right, it is R. If the arc does not curve towards the right, it is not R and the opposite is S. Other ways you'll hear it is clockwise, this one, is R and counterclockwise is S. Now I personally will confuse clockwise and counterclockwise or have to think of a clock, which is why I don't like it. But you can think of R as the right way of the clock and S is counterclockwise. It's not the right way of the clock. And that's the absolute simplest type of structure you'll see. But what if it's not this simple? What if you have multiple atoms to look at where it's not that easy to rank in one shot? For example, what if the molecule has a CH3, a CH2, CH3, and here we'll have a CH2OH, and let's put a bromine. So we look at the atoms and we see we have carbon, 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 and bromine. Bromine outranks all the carbons. Great, that's priority number one. But what do we do with the rest of them? First thing you'll recognize is when you don't have hydrogen, but you have a methyl, it is your lowest priority. So that's number four. But how do you know to rank the other two carbons? And this is where you have to, what I call, go deep into the molecule. I'm going to show you how to break this up for when you're first learning it, but as you get more confident, you'll be able to look at this structure and without drawing anything, immediately tell what is the higher priority and what is lower. The three substituents that we have to rank here are the CH2CH3. I'll put a black carbon to represent the chiral carbon. We're comparing that to the CH2OH. And finally, if you didn't recognize methyl as number four, let's compare that as well. Methyl is CH3. The first thing you want to do is look at the atom directly attached to your chiral center. That's carbon, carbon, and carbon. 
Because the carbons are exactly the same, no carbon wins, no carbon loses, we have to cancel them all out and go deeper into the molecule. Specifically, we're looking for the highest priority atom attached to the carbon that we ruled out. For the first one, we have hydrogen, hydrogen, or carbon, where carbon is the highest priority. For the second one, we have hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, where oxygen is higher priority. And for the last one, we have nothing but hydrogen, so we'll pick any random one. And this is what we're comparing. Oxygen is the highest priority. Since we already have a number one, the group with the oxygen becomes number two. Carbon is the second priority, and the next number down would be group number three. And finally, hydrogen is the lowest priority, giving me the number four that we already knew from our trick, but just in case now you understand why it's number four. Step one, rank. Step two, make sure number four is in the back. Good to go. Step three, cancel out number four, and now trace an arc from one to two to three. And in this case, it's counterclockwise. The top does not go to the right, so it is not R. Instead, it is S. But what if your molecule doesn't look this pretty and isn't set up this nicely? What if you're given a molecule in line structure? For example, 2-butanol, where you have an alcohol on carbon number 2, and you're asked to find if it's R and S. We're going to go through the same four steps. Step number one, rank. We have our little cheat guide. We identify the chiral carbon, the sp3 hybridized carbon with four unique substituents. Wait, four substituents? One, two, three. Where's number four? In line or skeletal structure, don't forget you have invisible hydrogens. And instead of writing invisible hydrogens, I'll put it as an invisible number four because we know it's there. It's the lowest priority. We're going to cross it out anyway. Just keep it in the background as a number four. So let's rank. We have an oxygen, which we're comparing to carbon and carbon. Oxygen outranks carbon, making the alcohol priority one. The two carbons are the same. They cancel out, but remember you have to look at what else is on the chain. The highest priority on the left carbon are three hydrogen atoms. The highest priority on the right carbon is another carbon atom. If the substituents are linear chains with nothing else on it, no branches, no functional groups, the longer chain wins. Not because it's heavier or longer, but simply because at the point of difference, when we have hydrogens versus another carbon, the carbons win. In this case, the ethyl group is going to be priority number two because carbon has a carbon on it. The methyl group, remember, it's always second to lowest if you have a hydrogen present. That is priority number three, and we already have number four. We prioritized, made sure number four is in the back, cancel out number four, and trace an arc from one to two to three. The top of the arc goes to the right, giving me R. Now what happens if priority number four is in the front of the molecule rather than the back? How do you find R and S? That is exactly what we'll cover in the next video, and you can find that along with the stereochemistry practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website layofersci.com slash chirality. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.